Hi, and welcome to the Insights Lab Creative. We're going to talk today about combating creative fatigue. My name is Octavio Maron. I am the VP and Executive Creative Director of iProspect. And I'm Robbie Weedy, Executive Creative Director at Mute6, recently acquired by iProspect this past summer. And before we do that, before we talk a little bit today about creative fatigue, we would like to show you some of the work we have done. Uh, and here's a quick glimpse about the work most Mute6 and iProspect did in the past year. So it's always easier for us to show you versus tell you what we do. So in a nutshell, as well outlined at the end of the presentation, Mute 6 and I Prospect really focused on performance creative in the sense of producing for all channels and maximizing with efficiency to drive return. So that said, uh, let's get back to Octavia. What are we talking about today, Oct? So today we're talking about this big elephant in the room, which is the creative fatigue, right? And how creative fatigue is eating our lunch every day how using the same creative can be really bad for our performance. Let's try to see today a different way to see creative fatigue. So then let's define what creative fatigue is to start. Specifically, how do we think of creative fatigue with respect to our digital initiatives at iProspect and Mute 6? So to understand creative fatigue is quite easy. Uh, it's basically, you can think of the billboard that you pass to and from on the way to work that's peeling in the sun, you're gonna tune it out over time. So effectively, creative fatigue refers to the national decline in ad performance that happens over time. Literally, it's rooted in human behavior with respect to over frequency and tune out by the audience. As the audience, as we see something, specifically an ad, uh, over and over, we tune it out and we eventually engage less and ignore the speakers. You know that feeling. And for the TV advertisers, it's a lot like wear out. If you think of the proverbial terrible late night infomercial or the daytime television legal spot that you see on your local cable, you know what this is like. You get tired of the message. And so effectively, uh, digital wear out, we have to think of it a little bit differently in the sense that we have much more robust tools for attribution and many more channels in which we're operating. So there's a lot larger considerations on how creative fatigue behaves in the digital space. Effectively, if we don't pay attention to creative fatigue, we leave our audience feeling like this, dry-eyed and pride open. And it's most important for us as advertisers with respect to our bottom line and how performance is effective due to this fatigue. As an audience tunes us out over time, the detriment on the media side is that click-through rate decreases while the cost to click or acquire a customer increases. Effectively, we're spending for the impressions with less efficiency. So the biggest thing to note is that, again, this is rooted in human behavior. It's not the form of any kind of ad penalization or anything we're doing wrong as advertisers. It's literally always going to happen. So creative fatigue, as it applies to digital, is not a question of if, it's a question of when. But that's not all, right? We, as we understand the premise of the creative fatigue, we must consider a new major uh, uh, additional factor that the world has evolved like the advertising has evolved, the creative has evolved, and how people consume information and how people consume advertising has evolved. You can see on this graphic of the mobile data traffic from 17 to 2022, how the, the traffic is basically doubling every two years. So people are consuming more data, people are consuming more information. And this means that people are having less time to pay attention on something that we are creating because in the end there's still only 24 hours a day so there's still like a certain period of time to people consume your your ad your creative or your ad 
uh, on the internet or everywhere. So time being constant and with the rise in mobile traffic, we're fighting for people's attention more and more with respect to wear out because of the rise of all the different platforms in conjunction with mobile traffic. We have lean back platforms like YouTube and Quibi. And then we've obviously all seen the movement towards more disposable content that you know, doesn't last more than 24 hours or disappears after 10 seconds. So suffice it to say, we're fighting for people's attention more and more than ever with specific consumption behaviors per channel. So effectively, what does this mean? It means that fatigue has evolved. And fatigue has evolved in a way that no longer one size of advertising fits everything. You no longer can apply your TV commercial and just shot this in vertical or, or transform this into a vertical and fit in a mobile phone and say that you have a mobile first app. That doesn't even work anymore because we need to make sure that on this new world that we have the empower consumer, we have two thirds of all the touch points being people driven. We don't have more the brand driven advertising that was like 10 years ago. Now everything is being driven by search, by third party sites or social media, especially influencers, how people are consuming information, how people are consuming products. So they learning about products in a different way. So meaning that the creative needs to evolve in the same way. And that's right. So to quote the great late Howard Gossage out of San Francisco, people don't read advertising, they read what interests them. And sometimes that's advertising. So effectively, so with the rise of all the mobile traffic across the different platforms, the truth remains that we must create meaningful experience for our audience. And without becoming too esoteric, effectively this means we must become better at meeting people where they are across digital. And that means sending the right message, talking to someone, and with the right message at the right time. It's like a very simple way to, to say this. is like when you choose to say I love you to someone, you're not going to say in an awkward situation. You're going to choose just the right time, just the perfect time to say that to someone. And that message will stick to the other person. So basically, that's what we do. That's, that's how I prospect believe we should be doing creative. And that's how we do creative, that we need to stop interrupting people and become what they are interested in. So now that we understand creative fatigue and how it's evolved with the growth of the digital space, where do we go from here? Here are three touch points in a tidy wrap up of how we approach producing creative to mitigate digital fatigue. First up, we like to maximize production. Effectively, if we're taking the time to invest in the resources for a project, let's use that project to create as much fuel as we can to fuel all these different channels. So an example of this, here's a shoe client, Wolf and Shepard. They're a dress shoe with an athletic soul. We had a single day shoot with celebrity talent, Steve Nash, the NBA player. And we needed to capitalize a multi-channel campaign by executing in one day. So how do we solve for this? What we do is we have three camera crews running, one capturing a hero long form kind of narrative piece, a second camera that's strictly capturing e-commerce kind of product focused shoe content. We have a photographer on set, and then also we have an iPhone shooter who's capturing user generated, you know, lower fidelity, but more approachable kind of content uh, to feel more native to these social platforms. You can also maximize these having a design framework in mind, meaning that this is a campaign for SF MoMA. And the example here is basically to explain that the way we did all this campaign was to leverage all the arts from René Magritte on this campaign to talk about the exhibition. So, this is just a, a glimpse of the whole campaign, but we have more than 30 different artworks on that because we developed this framework that could not just be on digital, but also on out of home and on bus stops and so on. So on this campaign specifically that we saw 27% more tickets sold than expected. The whole idea here is to create this design framework that just not just like Mac help us to maximize the production, but also create some kind of like a brand guideline across the whole campaign. So people, when people see it, they understand what we are talking about. And talking about the multi-asset campaigns, uh, you can see that this is performing better. This is a data from Facebook that shows that we see at least 20% increase in odd recall or even 30% in message association. The moment you have a multi-asset campaign, the moment you have more than one ad in the same campaign, and that's right, but it's not just about volume. While we want to maximize production, we're not doing it because we're just lean and mean. Effectively, we're producing this harbor of raw content so that we can pull across channels with respect to our different ad placements 
we want to be able to do step number two, which is we want to be able to follow the consumer journey. So knowing that the digital world is a consumer journey that crosses channels and goes down funnel and has multiple touch points, meeting the consumer where they are means creating creative placements that speak to each segment and piece of the funnel with respect to the best practice of consumption on the platform in which our ad is appearing. So a quick example of following the consumer journey down funnel and cross channel. Neat Theragun, they're a client of ours. They came to us for a top down hero campaign, which we executed here in this first example. It's an aspirational long form video that's a lifestyle vignette of different towns uh, coupled with a product. This was cut down specifically from the prospecting level to specific vignettes for remarketing. We also coupled it with a user generated shoot shot in house to really elicit on the hook of experiencing the Theragun for the first time and capturing reactions. And finally, at the retention stage, perspective to the channel, we can use all of this creative to connote a single-minded message. In this case, we're highlighting their pricing plan. Another example is with the work we do with Colligan Water. As some of you might know, Colligan Water is one company that provides uh, filters, whole house filters for not just filtration, but also for hot water and so on. And we create this full funnel here in a different way, not just with the paid social, but also doing our extra work with YouTube, make sure that we have SEO videos to, to educate and to teach people about the importance of the hard water and about the filtration about hot water. Also some organic posts and in the end, all the content, not just for educational, but also for SEO results. But after we maximize production and we follow all the consumer journey, we must find a way to prove these, that this is a success, this is work. So the third piece is how we test and learn with data. So testing and learning with data, we effectively call this our creative feedback loop in the sense that we have to meet people where they are and we know that creative is precious, but testing and learning requires being nimble in a way that allows us to always adapt and evolve ourselves with respect to our own knowledge of how we're speaking to consumers. So this, these five steps basically comprise that we develop creative, we'll launch it across channels down funnel with respect to specific placements, we'll let it run with paid support, We'll gather the learnings and analyze, and then we, we iterate beyond that in terms of we use that information to inform larger developments over greater periods of time. And we start this with the learning agenda to make the right questions about the success of the campaign and, to this, and most of that, more important here, to the success of the creative. The, what we are trying to understand from the creative, what the creative is performing, how the creative is telling the right message and driving the right results for us. And we use these measuring, uh, working alongside with the data team and the media team to, to make sure that all the brand metrics, the KPIs and all the solutions and, and all the results are being measured in the right way to allow us to learn from these, to actually do the testing and to evolve the campaign. So embracing all the different native tools on these platforms, relying on our partners for accurate reporting of the data, how do we get in the weeds a bit specifically on how we meet the consumers while maximizing productions to have specific creative that is tested on each channel with respect to consumption behavior. What we do is we'll create iterations of the same creative that differ with respect to the visual hook, the in-video text messaging, and thinking about things like ad copy and aspect ratio and length as it relates to the specific channel on which our ad is appearing. This iterative testing model is affectionately again the creative feedback loop. It's the trifecta of media management working hand-in-hand -hand with strategy and reporting really taking a data-driven performance-based approach to then inform larger and larger creative productions based on the need and to effectively and scalably mitigate fatigue. Great, so let's do a very simple recap over everything that we uh, spoke today. So final points for you to carry over and remember. First thing, stop interrupting people. Keep in mind that like we need to transform creative and everything that we do in something that people are interested in. Make sure that we have enough assets, make sure that a multi-asset campaign, making sure that we are talking to all the consumer through the funnel, try, trying to tie your message to the consumer journey. And, and finally, make sure that we test and learn, and then we test and learn, and then we test and learn, and then we repeat these forever. Right, forever, because as we know, the world is continuing to evolve, digital will continue to evolve. And with these preventative measures and this general understanding of how we combat creative fatigue, we can prepare ourselves to adapt with the world around us. 
So again, I'm Robbie Weedy from Mute6, Executive Creative Director. I'm Octavio Maron from iProspect, Executive Creative Director. Thank you so much for spending your time with us today. I hope you guys like. If you have any questions, please email us. Thank you. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye.